What's up everyone, Matt Smith here. Hope everyone's having a bloody lovely start to the day. How could you not? Have a look at this weather. It's killer. Love it. If you haven't already noticed, I froth good weather. So that's why I'm always talking about it. But anyway, so last week I spoke about making the decision of going into rehab, the amount of medication I was on, and basically everything I just had to tackle before I went in there. So I've been in rehab for a little chunk of time now, and I wanted to keep moving with these steps that were that I was making. So I wanted to start lowering my daily intake. Um, so when that came about, I obviously, the day I started, they start you off on very small uh, increments of lowering medication. So I think I dropped... As I said last video, I was on 145 milligrams of methadone and anywhere from 10 to 15 Valiums a day. So I didn't worry about the Valium to begin with. I just worried about the opiate um, and I started cutting back pretty fiercely on that. Um, I couldn't, I can't tell you exactly milligram steps that I went. So when it was time to start lowering, they there was talk about introducing Suboxone. I'd been on a Suboxone once before in the past, but it wasn't for getting off medication. It was a changeover in um, drug, basically, that I was going through. So after I spoke to all the doctors and nurses, it was basically the next day we put it into play. Um, so they introduced Suboxone over the top of the methadone. Now, they messed up in there. They, put, they threw me into rapid withdrawal. Uh, they didn't let me detox enough off the methadone. Um, there should be about 24 to 48 hours. You should start getting a sniffly nose and just all the withdrawals coming out before they dump Suboxone over the top. Um, so I didn't really know that and I wasn't really caring because I had other things to worry about. So I took this Suboxone and I think I was only 12 hours in of detoxing out of that 24 to 48 hour period from the methadone. And within that hour, I was so crook. Um, I, couldn't, I couldn't open my eyes. I couldn't talk. Um, energy levels were already low, but everything just took a turn for worse and I just got really sick. Um, I was in my room for, for a fair chunk of that time. So once I come out of the other side of that rapid withdrawal, uh, things definitely weren't much better. Uh, I was still sick. I wasn't eating. I wasn't drinking. Energy levels were low. Legs were killing me, aching, all the rest of it. Just all the full on symptoms of withdrawing from this kind of drug. And so once I started feeling little benefits, that was what I was running with. Um, it was the first time in a very long time I started feeling okay when I didn't have this medication because I thought it was impossible. So that's what I was grabbing onto and just reminding myself, this is what you're here for. It's already started, you already started to benefit from it. It's only gonna get better. Um, it obviously took a whole lot longer than what I had in my head to start feeling better. Um, it wasn't a massively long period of time, but when you're in it, it felt like a very dragged out period. So once I started feeling little, little hints of, you know, feeling good, I guess, without this stuff, I just kept acting on those steps and was pushing towards, you know, dropping more in shorter times and just pushing through feeling shit. Um, because I knew what, how, how good I could potentially feel at the end of it and I just wanted to get there. So once I started feeling those little things, I started to lower more. Um, now nurses said I was doing it too quick. You know in yourself if you're doing it at your own speed or if you are going too quick or if you can do it faster. It's up to you. I didn't want to be there. So once I started feeling these little benefits from lowering the first time, I just I wanted to lower more and more even quicker but it's it can be a dangerous process so both myself and the doctors decided on a two-day lowering program for myself personally um, so I'd, I'd lower stay on that dose for two days let the body get used to that and then I'd lower again lower again lower again so I think over the in the first four or maybe six days I lowered a fair chunk so on that uh, sixth day say I started feeling a whole lot more benefits to it. I was clearer. There was little bits and pieces of feelings and sensations that I hadn't felt for a long time coming back. And just 
a clearer outlook on life and being able to see, oh yeah, that that's possible still. I can do that. I, I can go day to day without this stuff in my system. Uh, it was actually a pretty good thing to start feeling, especially being in there. And at the start, uh, uh, yeah, I didn't want to be there. So benefiting in this way, it was, it was really good because it was, uh, I was not thinking about, oh shit, I don't want to be here or whatever it may be. It was just wholly and solely focusing on benefiting myself now because I could feel this, this, these benefits happening. So once I started feeling a little bit better after starting to lower the dosage of opiates, I s started doing the same thing with the Valium. Um, now the Valium, that, that was pretty full on uh, because my muscles rela were relaxed and so relaxed for 10 years or whatnot. I uh, didn't really like lowering that as much, which is weird. I thought the opiates would have been way more full on, but it turns out that the Valium was. Uh, benzos are a gnarly thing to get out of the system. Um, you feel yuck, like shit, really yuck. Like I'd probably say you feel worse off Valium than what, what I personally felt worse from withdrawing from Valium compared to the opiates. Um, well, the opiates were a little easier anyway. The Valium stuck in my system for a long time. The withdrawals felt a whole lot heavier on me once I started uh, lowering the Valium too on top of the opiates. Um, but that's all part of the process. It just, it takes time and it slowly starts to feel better. Just the feelings that come over you and whatnot, it's, it's not the nicest, it's not very pleasant, but more of a reason to get rid of it and out of your body. Uh, that's how I was looking at it at the time. I guess you can look at it two ways. You can look at it that way or you can go against it and be like, no, I need it because I feel like shit. You're not going to get anywhere with it. So yeah, I kept that positive headspace and kept moving forward with it. Once I was down low enough, it was like, right, tomorrow is going to be the first day um, of not taking anything at all for the first time in 10 years. So since I went into rehab up until this day, I think it was took me about 20 or 21 days to get to the first day of not having anything. Um, so I woke up, I woke up in, the, in the morning and went about my day. It was an odd feeling. It was weird because usually the first thing I do every day used to be get up and take my medication. Um, if I didn't, I wouldn't be able to eat. I wouldn't have... I, I just would have a shit day if I didn't have it. So it was odd getting up in the morning and purposely not taking any of this stuff and seeing how it was going to turn out. Um, so it wasn't the best turnout <laughs> the first few days, um, but it wasn't the worst in saying that either. I, I thought it was going to be a whole lot different. So obviously doing it over, over that 20 days or whatnot helped me if I had just done it and cold turkey straight away, I would have probably died to be honest but I didn't. That's why I took myself and went into rehab. So once I stopped taking everything for the first time, the struggle became really real. That's the time I listened to the doctors and nurses the most, um, and it was a massive help. They, they know little bits and pieces by, from seeing so many people deal with this stuff and go through it, what, what needs to be done to help the body um, in, in those circumstances. Once I started feeling semi-normal after that period and um, having the right support, doctors, nurses there treating me, um, it was basically just trying to get the body feeling normal again and as, as good as I could. And it started to happen over the next coming a week or so. So to start feeling, I guess, myself again after such a long time of not feeling that, uh, that was a pretty good thing because I didn't know you know, I, I didn't know going through all of this. That's, I guess, one of the reasons I was so scared to to approach it and do it in the first place was because I didn't know if I'd lost myself. I, um, you know, like I didn't, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to, I wasn't sure if the old me was going to come back through again. I didn't know if I'd lost that. I, I had no idea. So once I started feeling the old me, come back through I was like sweet I'm back on here I've just saved myself because you know I if I had to kept going the way I was living I definitely would be dead by now um if not 
I wouldn't be in a very good frame of mind to be talking about this stuff, that's for sure. So going from thinking, you know, I could potentially kill myself from all this um, to then feeling the normalness come back, it was that was probably the best thing I'd felt in a very, very long time. So that was a big push to keep on going and, and keep this pattern up. Um, and that's what I've done and that's what I'm still doing now to this day. Once I knew in myself that I was on the other side of all of this stuff, um, it was still very touch and go for me because I didn't know, you know, I, I'd never been on this side of it all. I, you know, the relapse side and all that I, had been spoken about so much. Um, I didn't know if it was going to happen to me. Um, and I guess that was a good thing because I kept my guard up and I didn't let it happen. Um, if, if it was something that wasn't spoken about throughout rehab and beforehand of relapse and lapsing and whatnot, it potentially could have happened very easily, um, but because I was aware of it, I made sure it didn't. Um, and I'd say that's a very good thing to, to have in your mind if you are going to go into something like this. Just, just, to, just to have in your mind all the things that could or can happen in, in a situation like this. Um, and just basically keep your wits about you because if you don't, you'll slip into all sorts and yeah it just it'll be a massive waste of time and it's hard enough when you're going through the process and getting it done day to day let alone uh, if you're wasting time throughout the process you would just be throw your hands in the air and yeah don't even worry about it it's something that you got to get get done pretty quick keep the mind super busy whilst doing it so once i'd had a couple of days of no medication in the system uh, in rehab surrounded by the right people I then wanted to get out of the place um, so I was in there for a 28 day program I ended up leaving on around about day 21 or 22 um, and I had to discharge myself to get out of there but if I, I just thought to myself there's there's no point me being in here I don't want to be here as it is I've kind of I've done the job that I've came here to do so I thought in my own head, I, I thought to myself, it was only going to be easier for the jobs I had ahead of me now to do on the outside, to do in, um, in a place that I was comfortable with, around the people I knew, um, and that were helping me so much on the outside. And I, I just kind of had jack of the place, and I was getting really, really antsy to get out of there and start living, living life um, how it should be lived. So I, dis, I did discharge myself, but that was on my own terms and that was because I knew I'd kicked it and I'd done what I needed to do. So I wouldn't recommend discharging yourself out of rehabs or hospitals um, against medical advice, but you know, as, as bad as it sounds against medical advice, I had nurses and doctors telling me, you know, mate, you're good to go, but you've just got to sign this piece of paper and it's, you're going against medical advice. So. I didn't know if I was doing the right thing or the wrong thing because I because I did discharge against medical advice. I wasn't allowed to go back into this rehab. Um, there was ways of getting back in, but there was no just admitting me straight back in again if you know something bad had happened on the outside. Um, so it was like, oh shit, am I doing the right thing here? And end of the day, I was very antsy to get out because there was so much new stuff going on. Um, I didn't want to. I didn't want all these new feelings and things to start feeling stale because of the surrounding and the environment I was in. Um, so it was like, right, get out of there, get home, and start going about your day-to-day, -day, um, just start going about life um, and how you're going to deal with it for the rest of your life, basically. So I did all the paperwork to discharge myself, rang mum, mum come and pick me up, and... Yeah, leaving the place, walking out of them doors and knowing I wasn't going to go back because it was pretty gnarly in there. When, whilst you're in there, you got to, you know, there's lockdown at nine o'clock. You can't go out for a smoke. You can't do anything. You, you're fully locked inside. And then throughout the day, you can't just walk outside. You can't go out, obviously. You've got to get assisted leave. Um, the person that comes to assist you to leave the place has to be like, they, they have to know the background of them, who they are to you, all that stuff. It was just gnarly to leave the place. So leaving that day that you know I knew I wasn't having to go back there it was just it was pretty good um but also 
a bit of a vulnerable feeling because I was like, oh, I've signed myself out of here. It's the place that got me to where I am now. I just had to be super certain um, that I wasn't going to make any decisions that going to go against me. Getting out and taking control of it was the best thing I could have done in the end. And I, I just knew in there, I, it took me a couple of days to sign this paperwork, um, to sign myself out, because I didn't know, you know, I, if I fail, I'll hate myself and it'll be all my fault because I've done this and I wanted to get out. I didn't want to stay in here for the extra however many days. Um, but I guess I did it because I knew it was the right thing to do. Um, and it was just going to make it a whole lot easier to keep to keep pushing forward with, with what I was doing. It was basically on to setting, setting a routine and a plan for the outside. Now, the brain is a crazy thing, as I've spoken about, and it needs to be occupied, especially when it had, has had something occupying it subconsciously for such a long amount of time. Um, so pretty much from the time you wake up in the morning, having a process and a plan of, all right, this is what I'm going to do, whether it's getting in the shower or going for a walk as soon as you get up and getting in the shower, coming home, eating breakfast, after breakfast, just knowing what you've got to do for the whole day. So you're not sitting down going, oh, geez, I've got, I've got a bit of time up my sleeve. What am I going to do? That's the time the brain will go, boom, drugs, whatever it was. Oh, yeah, cool. And once your brain makes that decision, it's really hard for yourself to, to go against that. Once I knew my day-to-day -day plan was working and it was getting me through days on the outside, it was just basically then getting back into um, life without drugs and pills involved. Um, and it was such a good thing. I wanted this for so long. Um, this whole 10 years, I wanted to, to be able to live without any of this stuff. Just didn't know if it was possible or if I, you know, if the pain was that going to be that full on once I did uh, lower the dosage that I'm, I was just going to have to go back up to that same dose again um, because of because of how I was feeling. So then figuring out that I didn't have to then, you know, it wasn't a thing of, oh, you need medication or you need this much of this or you need that to get along, to get on with your day-to-day -day life. I didn't need anything. I was really lucky that I come out of it and, you know, I, I wasn't in pain or there wasn't like nerve damage where I needed to take Lyrica or, you know, Oh, you know, your muscles spasm all the time, so you still you, you're gonna have to take Valium for the rest of your life. Like none of that. I was super lucky. There's still little things that helped me to this day from what I put into play back in rehab. Um, so the process of it all does work, um, and I'm living proof of it. I'm am sitting here clean on the outside, um, and it's the best thing and the best decision I've made in a long time. All right, that's going to be it for this one. Again, guys, I really appreciate all the love, all the commenting, the liking, the sharing that you've done for me on the last videos. Let's just keep that going. These videos are getting out, getting out there to the right people and what we're doing by sharing them and all the rest of it is actually working. The amount of people that have hit me up and come forward to me and told me about their problems and you know, people that have never spoken about it before. Um, it's really good to see and hear. That's what I'm doing this for, to get these people talking that haven't been able to for such a long amount of time. Um, so let's just keep it rolling, everyone. So until the next video, guys, go outside, enjoy this beautiful weather, and keep it real. Keep on living. Yeah.